So, yeah. Um, one movie you do mention is is the Wild One. Uh, yes. With with Marlon Brando as yes. a significant precursor yes. to the road movie. Yes. Uh, because you know that film provides a lot of the iconography and mm -hmm. the mood of the road movie. You know, you've got the, you know, it doesn't take place on the road. It takes place in that little town. Mm -hmm. um, where the motorcycle riders come in from off the road and take over the town, um, but that whole idea of young, a young, you know, a gang of young motorcycle riders coming into town kind of brings the danger of the road and that yes. whole road movie lifestyle into the town mm -hmm. and destabilizes it, disorients it, subverts changes. it, changes it, transforms it. Uh, you know, the leather jacket, the motorcycle, the, a lot of the things they say in those movies, like Brando says. Uh, what are you rebelling against? Yeah. What have you got? You exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. exactly. That, that line okay. in particular is sort of yeah. like emblematic of the, what the road movie is going to feel like, but mm -hmm. it's going to take it out onto the highway mm -hmm. as opposed to bringing it into the small town. But even before that, there is a yeah. little-known film noir classic from 1945 right. called Detour, right. which um, seems to run ceaselessly on late-night television yes. every once in a while. Yes. And it really seems to set the, I guess you could call it the melancholy tone of the road movies that follow. Mm -hmm. And the two uh, types that, that follow from that, that film are The Quest, road movie mm -hmm. that you mentioned mm -hmm. in your book and the outlaw road movie mm -hmm. and the two um, prototypes for that is Easy Rider yes. and Bonnie and Clyde right. the latter. Right. Why Detour? Why is this such a significant yeah. film? D Detour, you know, I talk about a lot in the early chapter uh, along with The Grapes of Wrath um, which, uh, which came out in 1940 so this mm -hmm. is five years later and uh, Detour is a seminal film in terms of laying more groundwork or, or laying some of the groundwork in the genre of the film noir mm -hmm. for the future road movie, uh, as, as, in addition to Eisenhower's Interstate Highway program. Um, yeah, Detour is a very low budget B movie with unknown actors and a not very well known director and it seems like every year the film gets more and more notoriety and I'm sure a lot of People have seen Detour, and it, it's really gone from a, be, being an obscure cult movie to a, a kind of a major classic, ironically enough. And it, um, it, it's it, it, the, uh, once again, like John Ford's The Searchers, Detour uh -huh. says it all. I mean, okay. that's another huge facet of what the road movie is about, is it's not getting where you want to go. It's being detoured from where you think you're going. Mm -hmm. um, road movies are very much about that. They're about traveling without a goal. The journey becomes the goal. And when the journey's the goal, it doesn't matter so much where you're going as long as you're going. Um, and so a lot of modern road movies will play on this idea of, you know, this guy is traveling from the East Coast to California to see, to, see to join up with his girlfriend and he wants to like start a house and, fa you know, a home and a family and settle down and along the way just these horrible things keep happening to him and he actually ends up sort of losing his identity, literally. Exactly, you mentioned that. And, 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 and he, he gets involved with this femme fatale woman so they form sort of this outlaw couple even though he's reluctant to be involved Vera. with her. Vera, Vera, oh yeah. Yeah, the character. Vera, yeah, yeah. she's just um, yeah. And you, you mentioned know, notorious. about the parody that's played out in the hotel room where he, he assumes the identity of the man who died yes. while, while driving him to his destination while he was a hitchhiker. Apparently. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, so there's lots of bitter twists in mm -hmm. that film. Pascal and was the character. That yeah, he, yes, he, 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 he inhabits because uh, yeah. like this, this hitchhiker he picks up dies mysteriously and he decides for some weird reason that he's going to pretend to be this person. Exactly. And uh, it just kind of spirals out of control. and. It's a real um, prototype to a whole huge, you know, section of the road movie history. Mm -hmm. Lots of, of road movie noir. Yeah, Red Rock West, Delusion, um, Joyride, a lot of these road movies. Mm -hmm. You know, California, you get involved with somebody and uh, all these horrible things keep happening. And that's, you know, that's the risk. You know, you go out on the road mm -hmm. and 
you know, something really bad can happen to you. That's so, what a lot of road movies teach. Exactly. So while the road is, is um, a means to uh, understand who you are for self-discovery, it's also fraught with danger. Exactly. And, and mystery. Exactly. In respects. Exactly. And some, some road movies will code the, 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 the traveling in terms of a more idealized quest for self-knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, and others will code it more as a risk with extreme consequences where, um, you know, you can, you can lose your whole sense of reality. You know, you can lose, you, you can go insane. You know, you can be blown up, you can be shot at, you can be carjacked, you know, you can be murdered. Tremendous danger. Tremendous danger out on the road. But that's... I, they're, they're connected, you know, if you, if you go on a vision quest to discover yourself, whether it's sitting in your room and meditating or going out into the desert in you're Arizona. You're going to discover something you're not going to like. Yeah, you may, you may. You it's, may. It's, it's uncomfortable. It's a risk. And the road movie kind of articulates that sense of, hey, I want to get outside of my routine and I want to, like, see who I am and mm -hmm. I want to see what this is all about. So it's a... You know, I think a huge aspect of the genre is this idea of kind of reflecting on yourself and on your society and mm -hmm. how you position yourself. Interesting. Let's talk about the importance of moving into the 1960s now. Mm -hmm. uh, two seminal films, Bonnie and Clyde from 1967 mm -hmm. and uh, Easy Rider. Both, uh, you think, basically really lay the serious foundation for all the road movies that, that follow yes. from it. You say that, that Bonnie and Clyde exhibits mobility as freedom, uh, mobility as sensual and subversive thrill. Can you mm -hmm. maybe expand a little bit about that? Sure, sure. Um, you know, it's a, to a degree it's an arbitrary designation, but from my research it seems to me that you know, Bonnie and Clyde in 1967 and Easy Rider, especially in 1969, um, kind of, you know, launch mm -hmm. the road movie as its own genre. Oh. Not a Western, not a gangster film, not a screwball comedy. It establishes its own identity. Not a film noir. It kind of establishes its own identity, its own parameters. And all the road movies that come after sort of a lot, many of them react to those two, one or the other or both, in various ways. And um, as far as Bonnie and Clyde and this idea of mobility as a, as a sensual and subversive thrill, I mean, uh, you know, a, a lot of it has to do with Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway and the kind of eroticism that they put into the role. Um, that has to do with the late 1960s and sort of the whole idea of sexual freedom, sexual liberation, uh, though it also plays into the tradition of the star mm -hmm. system. You know, I mean, Faye Dunaway in that film owes a lot to, you know, Greta Garbo and, sure. and other classical starlets, but yet it's, it's couched in a counterculture mm -hmm. feel. Um, and if you think about the film, I mean, they are, you know, a gangster outlaw couple and they are on the road a lot. You know, driving is, is a huge part of that film. What happens to them in and through the cars mm -hmm. is important. They're constantly stealing cars. Many of the major scenes happen in cars or when they stop on the road and get out of the car or when driving they Driving becomes the crux of the movie. Driving, right? exactly. Yeah. That's, what I'm, that's what I say. Driving yeah. becomes sort of the crux of the narrative through which the whole story occurs. Mm -hmm. And so um, that film goes far in doing that. You know, I don't know how much the director, Arthur Penn, said to himself, hey, I'm going to make mm -hmm. driving the crux of this film. Maybe he did, very likely he did not. But, it, right. it, but I think it plays into the feeling of 1967, which is like, let's get in the car, let's go, let's keep going, we'll just shoot our way, find our way, you know, make our way and, and get away from everything. The police in the film, mm -hmm. but the police as symbolic of the law, mm -hmm. the home, the family, the structure, the, the stability. Traditional values. The traditional values that they, that they don't want to have anything to do with. And in that, those are very much bound up with big business corporate mm -hmm. greed. And 
the causes of the depression. Right. And, uh, and in terms of an, e an economic structure that is unfair to a lot of people. 